Swim. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Anyway, we'd all like to welcome you to the Waste Game, the most popular board game in Wales, played every day by thousands and thousands of people. And what is the Waste Game? Well, the Waste Game is a problem-solving contest, a game of skill, with the occasional piece of good luck. And it's your good luck tonight to have the option whether to play or not. Our regular players don't normally get the choice. And who are they? Well, they're young people. And because they're young people, tonight's game is going to be full of singing and dancing. It's easy to forget If they say it's depression It's easy to forget If they say there is no work now And in a world gone mad We make the same mistakes Yeah, in a world gone mad History repeats Now don't worry, some of those are not half as frightening as they look. You'll enjoy an evening in their company, playing the waste game. So let's get started. Throw. Seven. Not bad. You've done quite well at school. An average pupil. You've even got a few qualifications. They're highly unlikely to get you a job, of course. But you're on the board, so you've got to keep on plugging away. Now, the important thing to remember is not to panic, because you're not on your own. We haven't got a proper job either. It's not that we haven't tried, mind you. We have. But nothing doing. No dice. Anyway, you've got another option coming up. You can go on a training scheme. Good choice. Get a skill, because some of them really do train you properly. And it's nearly 30 quid a week in your pocket. You seem to have scored. Yeah, I went up to this factory and I was working and sweeping up. I was all day emptying bins out. And I was supposed to be going up to learn to control machines now. That's all I had been doing is all the dirty jobs, sweeping machines and sweeping the floor and emptying the bins and all that. Out there. It's not really a job, really. You just go in there and... There's no incentive to get up in the morning because you go in there, all you're going to do is clear up rubbish. There's no real work at the end of the day. Well, they tell you a bit about, like, what you should do painting and a bit of bricklaying. But you take, if you come off the, off the scheme, you're not going to get a job just painting and bricklaying, look, looking for people who know what they do and, like, experience. It's just like a thing, putting you on there and making these figures go down. Now you're out on the market, catch 22. you got to know the job before we give the up to you So put you on a scheme And get you off the streets Bend down the hatches Make the figures neat Because if the waste game work on mad Then make the rules and that's too bad The waste game growing sea It's a cold hard world when the face the reality There's one scheme I was on um, where I was working with a builder, and we was roofing, and I was taking the chimney down, and it was in the middle of a snow blizzard. And uh, the boss said, oh, I'm going down for a cup of tea. And I said, oh, what should I do, man, boss? He said, I said, and uh, he said, oh, stay there, just take the chimney down. And it's snow blizzard. I saw you, while you were taking tea downstairs, I was up in the chimney, you know, in the middle of a snow blizzard. So I said, oh, it's unbelievable. You know, he, he punched me once as well, because I couldn't break the bloody wall, right? It's the waste day. When I started on schemes, I thought they were real jobs. I thought that's what we had, it was a real job. And we were setting one job in a hall to sand in a floor. And uh, the idea was that we had little blocks of wood and bits of sandpaper, and there was about 15 of us, all in separate parts of the hall, sanding the floor down. And 
I'd been appointed by the, the supervisor to be what he called a shop steward. So I, I said, well, I don't really see the point of us doing this. It'll take three days to do this, sand this floor down by hand. So I asked him why he didn't hire an industrial sander. And he said he wouldn't. So I said, oh, we're going to go out and strike then. And so he, actually, he went and hired an industrial sander. And he wasn't very happy with the whole thing. Like, he didn't really like it. But the job was done in one afternoon with the sander. And um, he really didn't kind of understand, you know. He, he put me in this position where he said that I was going to be shop steward. And it was like a, something he just said. I think he, he just said off the top of his head, really. But when I actually decided that it was time for some kind of change and some kind of negotiation, he really didn't like it at all, you know. And consequently, I got sacked. I'm a very fortunate person. I've just gone through an apprenticeship with the British Steel Corporation in Port Albert. When you look at that compared to a white TS scheme, as far as I'm concerned, a white TS scheme is totally a waste of time. It's ludicrous because they're not getting a training. You can't be trained in, in a job in two years. You know, God, I've done it for four years and, and I, I'm still not good enough. Like, i still got a lot more to learn. They push onto these schemes, and all they do is mix with people of the same age, who are in the same situation. They've never been influenced by older people, and because they're all stuck together, they're all trundled in, they're all chucked out of the scheme afterwards. They go back on the door, they do the same thing every day. Compared to an apprenticeship, it's just nothing. No doubt you've heard all this before, but here's a new twist, and it's special for you. It's called Operation Sport. For most players, it's a chance to work that body and stay off the streets when their schemes come to an end. <laughs> but for you, running Operation Sport is your scheme. It's what you do to earn your 30 quid. You get a lovely tracksuit and a badminton racket. All you have to do is get as many other waste game players as possible into your youth or community centre. You write the numbers down in a little book and we make it look good for you. Anybody who comes in and goes back out again for a pack of fags, and comes back in again, counts as two people. Nice deal, eh? Throw. Not bad. You've got a crowd of lads in. They're a bit rough. They're bored. And they're two years older than you. But I'm sure you can manage. <laughs> well, tell them they're going to play football. They like that. Uh, we don't like football. What do they? Well, try asking them nicely. <laughs> well, try tossing them the ball. <laughs> well, what do they think they're here for? If you're interested in sport, it's great. You go to a youth centre and you can, you can do sport eight hours a day if you like weightlifting, table tennis, badminton, five-a-side football. But if you're interested in debate and discussion, then you can't. Well, what do they think they're here for? I reckon it's because they want to keep people in the dark. The more you keep people in the dark, the more obvious it is that you can control them, really. So if you can control people, then there's no option and there's no choice. Well, tell them they're going to play football. <laughs> but really, that's all they're doing is shoving them in corners and making them lift weights and exercise their arms and don't bother with their brains. And it's the brains of things that we want to change because that's what, that's what moulds generations. That's what helped the country. Shocking, isn't it? Some people play the waste game so destructively. And Operation Sport seems such a good option for people with nothing but leisure time. Well, you better give your nice tracksuit back. Now then, you've reached the end of your time on your training scheme and the makers of the game say you've got a 60% chance of going on to the next stage, that real job. But in the valleys, the reality is that your chance is less than 40% and where it hits hardest, less than 20. On this dice, you have to throw 16 or more to get that proper job.
first left school, I was excited about going to college. I wanted to do hairdressing before I left school, so I went to college for two years. And I didn't bother about looking for a job while I was in college, because I thought once I got that exam, it's easy to get a job. But it wasn't the case. What are we fighting for? After these months of being on the dole now, I've sort of got away from wanting to do hairdressing. That's what I really wanted to do in the first place, but now it hasn't got me anyway. The two years training. No way in this country that you're gonna get a job. A young boy at the eight, eight, 18 years of age, you know, fair enough. I might I got experience of certain jobs, yeah. But there's a lot more. There's a lot older people who got the experience. They think, oh, I take this one on, you know, take this bloke on. He got experience. He's older. You know, so they would say, oh, forget, you know, they'd rather have old stock and a new stock. I don't trust anyone now, including my family, you know. I've had so many people saying, oh, there's a job going down, so and so, I'll go down and see it. You know, you definitely get a job, for example, like, you definitely get a job. And I've gone to that place and they said, oh, it was, it was like, hell you're talking about, really, there's no jobs in there. And there's sort of things that like happen sometimes that you don't, you don't trust what anybody says anymore. Most of the time, you just sit down and watch telly. You get bored, and then you on telly, you get depressed, you don't have the money, you go to different places and go shopping. You can't afford, really afford to go shopping, get clothes. So you just sit down and watch telly, you can't get the money, you go nowhere else. I was 18 months on the door. Every day was the same. There's no weekdays, no weekends. The only different day was the day you get a door check on. You spend all that then, give most of it to your mother, the rest of it on beer. And that's your money gone then. You've got to wait another fortnight for more money. You're stuck again then. Wake up the next day, doing nothing all day again for a fortnight. What are we fighting for? Your natural sort of flow for doing something, your, your confidence in, in, in yourself and in whatever you decide you, you want to produce is lessened simply because you feel as if you're a, a lesser person through being unemployed. So consequently, you do less, you know. If you felt good about things, if you felt good about life and strong and felt as if people actually believed in what you were doing and took you seriously and respected you, then you could do a lot more. I haven't got anything to do. I get up as late as possible, shower, put my makeup on, walk around town. I look in the shops for the things I can't afford. I just wait then until the night and I go out with my friends, wait for, wait for them to come home from work so I can phone them. Or watch the films on the telly in the afternoon. Just wait for my gyro on a Friday. That's... I don't do anything really, I listen to records. That's all very familiar actually. You take a bloke I know, all he does is walk up and down the high street counting paving stones. He could tell you exactly how many paving stones there are on the left-hand side going up and on the right-hand side coming back down. You know the bloke. The bloke is always hanging around outside the snooker hall with one of his friends waiting for it to open. He hangs around outside that hall for hours. So that's the next thing for you to work out in the game. What are your tactics for filling your time? Throw. You should be playing across field. And ready for the break. The man of the match was Simon. He had an outstanding game. 
he played well. That's the first time I've seen you playing well. as good well. as that time. <laughs> off season. Oh, we're gonna get fit for Sunday. <laughs> The greatest achievement of the boys is undoubtedly the fact that they come off the door from nothing and form a team. I mean, when you're talking of a football team, you're not just talking of getting together, you're talking of expense, you're talking of everybody, you know, sacrificing their door money to buy football kits, which are not cheap these days, football boots, which are not cheap these days. And then annually, you know, per week we got uh, subscriptions to the team per week, we've got an annual fee to pay, we've got a, a, a membership fee to pay, we've got a club membership fee to pay. I mean, this is all money that's got to be found by the boys and was found by the boys. So when you talk of, you know, that uh, you only get a pittance at all and you're paying so much per week towards the football team, well, I mean, unless you're committed, you're not going to give that money away, are you? And that is the biggest thing, that how, how we really got off our backsides and just got up and did something about it. I mean, it's an achievement. If somebody's working, they make something like a shop front or car something like that. They, I made a car, I made a shop front. Like this, we got Kaiwan Rangers, we made Kaiwan Rangers. <laughs> push, come on, push, push. Now we've got the team, you can get up and you think, well, it's Tuesday today, that means we're training tonight, you know, this get things organised, i got to go training tonight, where's my kit? It, it's something that keeps everybody alive. I mean, when you're training twice a week, Tuesday, Thursdays, and playing on a Sunday, I mean, you see, you, you're getting together three times out of, you know, three days out of the seven days in the week. Now, that is something that really does shape the week. What are we fighting for? 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 Music is a great means of expression. It's something you can get involved in and you can give it your whole, you know. And uh, particularly, like, um, if you enjoy performing in front of, if you're an extrovert, like myself. I've been lucky in that I've had the opportunity to play music, but I was helped. My father helped me. My father used to be in a band himself. My father's a local DJ. Um, Ashley Early singer in the Peruvian Hipsters. His father played in a local band and bought him his first guitar. So we, we were given a helping hand, and other people perhaps won't have the option. And they, they also won't have the option in that um, they might leave school without any qualifications, and they might find that uh, there's nothing around you for people without any qualifications, so they find they either move away or they drift into the woodwork of, of living in the Ronda and end up sitting in their houses and perhaps watching TV in the afternoon and doing nothing. When well, you got to learn it, you've got to educate people to spend their time in a productive, interesting and constructive way, rather than feeling as if they're hanging about and have got no choice and they've been thrown on the slaggy bit, 17, 20, whatever age. Good afternoon. Oh, you're kidding for me. Oh, that'd be nice for you, man. If you're joking. Why not? That's really trendy to get into something like that. Oh, come on, that looks like a good thing. No way. Yeah. Not into that sort of thing. What about that? Oh, what do you think? I don't think so. No? No. That's Why? not you. Oh, get off, I'm going to see you in that. Well, it's worth on that one. Oh, I don't Come like on, that. there's nothing here for me, Gay, now. Well, you can never get what you want round here anyway, can you? What are your tactics for filling your time? Oh, God, if that's all I had to do was go down the job centre. Drive me crazy. I know, it's really depressing, isn't it? Yeah, just as well I got this voluntary work to fill up my week, though. I don't see why more people don't do it. Yeah, I mean, what you were like when you first started your bag of nerves. Is the yeah. just taking the plunge, it is. That's well, the problem. Well, it was difficult because I did. I was so young and everyone was so yeah. much older than I was, anyway. What were you like in housing, then? Fine, because I knew most of the people down there. So well, I was having a battle, really, innit? Yeah. 
Because, I mean, nobody really knows our voluntary organisations are around. No. I got bored with my life when I started signing on. And I thought, well, I'm not going to just get myself into a rut by going out and drinking or smoking or taking drugs. I do something about it, and that's why I first joined Carly Advice on Drug Abuse. Once you get involved with one group, it tends to lead on to working with other voluntary groups, to the contacts you've made with the first group you started with. I mean, your work might not be fully relevant to other groups, but it does help. I started off with Valley Advice on Drug Abuse, and that led on to Swansea Housing Aid. It's all interesting work, and I do enjoy helping people, but it's just that I'm not getting paid for it, which is a bit of a bind, really, because I'm only on about £18 a week on supplementary benefit. And it's not much to get me through the week where I'm spending money on bus fare, going places and seeing people, and it doesn't pay at all. I mean, it's, it's basically the same for me. I mean, I, I really want to stay in the community work field. And good as, as voluntary work is, and as satisfies, uh, satisfying as it is, I, I would like it to be full-time and pay, but of course, I mean, those jobs are hard to come by. Just to have a football team is just not enough. A lot of them end in their early 20s. How are they going to even think of a small family or think of moving in with their, their future wife? Well, they haven't got no security at all, apart from cashing out a big green gyro every two weeks. All this effort the boys are putting in, I mean, they work and they worked hard. I mean, this is you're talking of enterprise now. I mean, getting off and doing something from nothing is enterprise. But what have they got to show? You know, they haven't... They haven't got the opportunity to use enterprise in the, way, in the field of work, in the field of housing, in the, in the field of money. They, they can't... There is no outlet for them to put all this enterprise, all, all this commitment, all this um, hard work I into an actual job creation or whatever. They aren't... As far as, you know, as we feel, as the boys feel, the team feels, that, you know, all this work we put into the football, how can we put into something else to get a reward out of it? You see, most players end up realising that no matter how well they fill their time, they're still playing the waste game. And the truth of the matter is, you won't feel you off that board until you get that proper job. But by this stage of the game, your resources are so depleted, you're going to need a bit of help to get on your bike. And this is where the waste game comes up with a whole maze of options. The welfare state. There's no dice to throw here. No element of luck. It's all done by the rule book. And when the rule book rules, it doesn't leave any scope for the adjudicators to give you the benefit of the doubt. Look, this is how it may work in the case of an average player. Someone who may look a bit like you or me. First, we need your name and address. It's Mr. X. Mr. X? Yes, I'd like a private interview, please. I'm sorry, right now I'm the only person available. But if you'd like to go and wait over there, I'll see what we can do a bit later. Well, well I'll tell you what it is, then. I need some new clothes, like, these are all I've got, and, and these are wearing out. And how exactly did your other clothes wear out? Well, well, I've worn them solid for a year, they just worn out. Normal wear and tear, Mr X. There is money in your weekly benefit to cover that. Money in my weekly benefit? I've only got £23.85 a week. I've got to pay the old girl 12 quid board and lodge, and buy everything else out of that. I haven't got the money to buy new clothes. Well, I appreciate that, Mr. X. Obviously, we see a lot of people in similar circumstances. But rules are rules, unless there's any other criteria that apply. Look, I get a job interview away next week. I've got to go tidy to that, haven't I? What do you expect me to wear? Well, that's good. If you get the job, come back and see us, and we may be able to help you. If your employer insists on an improvement in your appearance. If I get the job? How am I going to get the job? I haven't even got any clothes for the interview. I can't even afford to get there. I mean, can you even help me with the bus fares? It's a hell of a pricey bus journey. Well, have you asked your prospective employer if he can help you with the fares? No. I can't do that, can I? I look stupid. Well, it will be necessary for us to contact your prospective employer before we can consider helping you. What? You're going to phone him up and ask him to pay my fare to go to his interview? Fine chance I got there, haven't I? And turning up dressed like this. I don't think I'll even bother to go. So you're not going to attend the interview now? Well, there's no point, is there? Well, I must tell you, Mr. X, there is a possibility 
Now that you've told me this, that you may be regarded as not making all reasonable efforts to secure employment, which could lead to a reduction in your benefit. What, you're going to stop my duel? I went to the crease office in the job centre to see if they could help me, so I explained that I wanted to use my dance and I wanted to use it in, in, in the community. You know, I've got a little bit of talent and I want to use it and I want to develop it and explain to them that I, I didn't want to be a superstar or anything. And I could detect that they really didn't understand. They thought maybe I was starstruck or something. Well, I explained to them again and again and all they could come up with was that they thought I would be a good candidate for business studies. So I just very politely walked out and I just, I just couldn't believe it. I've, I'm left empty and I, I just don't know what to do. No advice, nothing. They just didn't cater for me at all. offered a job, well, told to go for an interview uh, once, and being a vegetarian, they, they told me to go down for this interview, or pol they politely put it, they, they'd stop my door, which meant if I didn't go down and have this interview, um, I wouldn't have any money to live on. So I went, I went down, and uh, the, fir the first thing that I found out was that the interview was for a job in an abattoir, which, because I'm vegetarian, isn't very suitable. <laughs> you know, you know, I don't know, you won't get told now, But they won't because you, you, you live with your parents, so you're not sort of, uh, what's it called, well, destitute, you're destitute. You don't need the money, you yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Of course, no, you, of course you need it. Yeah, I, but I'm they won't say that. You won't be able to sign on. If I was going to park my job, you won't be able to sign on. But the first of February now, they reckon. Oh, no. It used to be six weeks, I tell yeah, you, it is. 13 weeks now, it is. I mean, your parents can support you the money now. They reckon your parents will support you now. Oh, they can't, but they can't afford them. So what are you going to do if they don't give you money then? I mean, you know, you're out like that. You know, yeah, but I mean, a row or not, you know, if they're the rules, you're not, you're not going to get money, you're not going to get nothing. Tough game, isn't it? And it's getting tougher. But if official help seems less and less likely to get through, then surely there must be plenty of informal ways of calling up reinforcements. And this is where Welsh players ought to have a real advantage. All the friends and neighbours are bound to back you up. After all, this is supposed to be a caring community, and perhaps it is. You throw and see. Any personalities in? Anybody work in? <laughs> Nobody working, is there? My mate hasn't worked for 30 years. He went to the job centre last week, a woman in the job centre said to him, what was your last job? He said, a prefect. <laughs> he thinks a P45 is a gun. She felt sorry for him. She gave him a job. He went back to the house. He said to his wife, Hey, after 30 years, I've got a job. His wife said, Bloody hell, are we just getting on our feet as well? <laughs> he said, Where's my overalls? She said, In the museum. <laughs> He's putting his working boots on the first morning of work by the side of the bed. His wife said, Hey, you're putting them boots on the wrong feet. He said, I know, they should be on you as a lazy bugger. <laughs> Well, they just think the lazy labels are no good for nothing. But bums, they call it like, you know. I went and seen my girlfriend's mother because she upset my girlfriend and I asked my girlfriend what was wrong. And my girlfriend said, oh, my mum called her a bum. Now, a bum, they mean, is a down and out. Now, I know down and out, fair enough. I caused trouble at home, yeah. Me and my dad couldn't get on. But I, you know, down... I know, I know classes are down and out, you know, so I went and saw her, like I told her that I know down and out, and she was on about getting married. She said that 
she don't want her to get married to me because I'm on the door because I am going no money. There's one thing that really makes me angry is when you get older people or people, anybody, same age as me, in work, and because they're employed, they sit there and they kind of scorn the unemployed. Like, my mates are all unemployed and I got relatives who are unemployed and I know that they'll do any job going and they look for the jobs and they try and get the jobs, but the jobs aren't there. And that Margaret Thatcher, she doesn't give a bugger for us, does she? She don't care about us. She hasn't got a big mortgage to pay, has she? She got a big house in London, number 10 Downing Street. Two policemen outside and she still gets out. <laughs> she wants to lend her the M4, now she's having a street party for the unemployed. Unemployed, me living in a valley like this, you tend to look on by the older people as some kind of useless person who's never going to find a job in their lives, especially if you look the way I do. But the point is, we are looking for jobs and we don't want to move out of the valley. This is where we were born, it's our home. What asks me about people who don't, who don't understand about unemployment? So that's what I don't understand, is that they don't want to understand life. You know, they treat it as if it's a bloody disease, you know. I walk on the other side of the street. So people coming up don't think that I'm going on the door. Narrow streets breed narrow minds. Care for kin, but not for kind. Well, it's a strange thing, isn't it, really? But it's bad enough being unemployed yourself when you've got a dependent. Exactly. How can we possibly fetch the dog up to lead a fulfilled existence on a supplementary benefit? She's an unemployed dog. I know, yeah. That's exactly the problem that everybody's got in the moment. The problem they face, isn't it? How to fetch up their families, you know, on the very little money they've got to a reasonable standard of living. Yeah. How can they, uh, you know, think about wider issues when just the bare necessities of everyday life are so... This care for kids, you know. It, it's so deep, people have closed their doors to it, haven't they? They yeah. don't want to know anything other than their family. No, they don't see much of their noses, because they've got to. These are just some of the photographs I've taken of people on the door in the Neath area. To get over what I really wanted to express in my photographs about these people, I had to go into their world to go where they go. Because you're talking about, about people who are young and long-term unemployed. I mean, it's a stupid thing, isn't it? How can you be long-term unemployed and still a young person? But that's what they are. And this has become a way of life to them now going down to the canal bank, buying a few cans, putting on the walls what they want to see, knowing now that no one can sort of put them down for what they are expressing. Dreaming of what might have been or dreaming of what might still be. This is all there is to them now, dreams. They're not part of the real world. They've, they've withdrawn from society. They don't see themselves as adequate to be in society now. They just float in a world of their own. So let's face it, you're getting hopelessly trapped by the dead end of the waste game and you've had such a bad run of the dice. In fact, you've run out of options. Of course, there's always a lucky throw, but too often the light at the end of the tunnel is, well, only another scheme. Perhaps it's a community programme. You know, a year of part-time work with 40, 50 quid a week in your pocket. Not bad. Chances are you'll be doing something decent for old people. Or 
cleaning up a bit of waste ground. But then that finishes, and you're blocked again. So I think we owe you a break from the game, a night of escape. Watch green and get you pissed. A gyro. First of all, a gyro comes to the door. You find your unemployed person runs to the post office to, to cash it. And then it's usually straight into the off license. Just so more or less they can forget forget about the week that they've had sitting around doing nothing and the next day they finally realise that they've only got £10 left to last them two weeks I certainly know people who look for ways to escape in, in this area they look for ways so that they can earn money so that they can buy more drugs or more drink so that they can get out of their minds so that they're the reality of life doesn't affect them so much because when they're out of their minds they can just sit there and not have to worry about it, they can be numb to it. Well, there's a lot of people in the Neath area on drugs. Cannabis mainly because that's the cheapest. It's cheaper than buying beer. You can get, well, you can get high for about two or three pounds a night, which is better than spending on beer because you can spend about ten pounds on beer to get in the same state. Behind that, then are amphetamines. There's a lot of people on amphetamines to keep them going. And there's LSD after that, but that don't come around much, that don't. It's usually on the Christmas time. Hello? Uh, I'm doing speed. Um, yeah, it's really mucky me, but I'm 22. I've been on the door for over a year now. And I got to cancel a job. I tried to come off the speed, but I, I've just gotten really mucked up. But I, Right, so we know he's a speed, amphetamines. Right. Right, he's 22, on the door. He's got a chance of a job, and that's obviously why he's trying to come off. Um, so that, how many times has he tried to come off? And it, that's... First of all, we can point out that it's natural what he's feeling. That's right. And all the rest yeah. Of it. Find out how... There's all sorts of drug use and abuse in the Pontadoy oh. area. There, there aren't that many people that want to be helped because they don't recognise that it is a problem because it's already become part of their daily routine. The main thing about drugs is it's not actually the cause, it's the symptom. The problem is there's nothing to do up here. There's no facilities for the young unemployed. There's nowhere to go and there's nothing to do. And what, what, what there is to offer them, it all costs money. So people turn to drugs. And it is an enjoyable thing, and that's what government campaigns usually forget to stress, is that they're enjo it's an enjoyable experience, and not just to point out the risks and the dangers, but that people get enjoyment out of it. Until, of course, things starting to go wrong, and, and the illnesses or diseases such as um, losing weight, not being able to eat properly, um, Sharing needles and getting diseases such as hepatitis and, of course, AIDS at the moment is the biggest thing through sharing needles. I mean, that is waste then. Shocking business, isn't it? Now, the makers of the game don't like to see players taking this escape option. I mean, it brings the game into disrepute. It makes people think it's the game that's driving players to this wild behaviour. I don't know. But you can't deny there's been a lot of casualties. And it's not just drink and drugs and wild play that's doing it. Have you noticed since play began that even steady players are getting hurt? And they're getting hurt badly. It seems to me it's high time we had a review of the rules. I don't know, load the dice in the player's favour, perhaps. The trouble is that over the years, changes in the rules have been brought about by the players of the game joining together to meet the makers. A way of playing called politics. And to most players today, politicians are one big switch off. Well, they're all about the same, all of them. I don't trust them myself. Like it's just pathetic. They're not. They, you know, they all go to this ward meeting 
once a month. They sit there for two hours talking about this lamppost fell over and a little bit of political discussion. And then they all go home and forget everything about it. You know. That's all they want of young people is they vote. I was a member of the Young Socialists, OK? Labour Party Young Socialists. That's all they wanted me to do, to really fresh for the Labour Party. They didn't want to know my opinion. They didn't, didn't want to know my attitude. They didn't want to know my feelings on things, it, you know. They just want me to deliver leaflets. My friends are indifferent. They don't think in a political sense. They, they simply think uh, in a kind of, in a, in a pleasure sense, really. They think in terms of what they can do on a daily basis. Um, food, clothes, drink, the nightlife. They don't really think um, about issues as, as such. But certainly they, they are aware that there are, there are problems and there are difficulties which will have to be overcome. And they really do, they steer clear of politics, really, because they, I think they don't want to be embarrassed, because a lot of people basically don't know the difference between left and right, because it's never been taught. You never get taught that in schools or anywhere else. So they haven't really got an idea. So they don't want to be embarrassed by getting involved in something which people will put them down in. This style of play we've just been talking about, politics, isn't popular without players, because it doesn't seem to get the results anymore and because it's so old-fashioned. It's a pity, really. Years ago, it had a golden era in Wales, and there were some great players here in these valleys who made it a really exciting game to play. Actually, they got a lot of rules changed, and they involved a lot of people in doing it. In fact, they were only able to do it through teamwork, working together. Now, the whole point about our players today is that they haven't got any work. No work no teamwork. So how can they hope to change the rules? Where are their politics going to come from? Day after day The news is of destruction And all the saints will save us from ourselves I think it's time we'll look for better answers Any day, any way now What are we finding? Our video group is a group of people in the valley who have come together to do certain video projects concerning what's happening in the community and what the effects are on the local people. The, the video that we're doing at the moment is called Staying for the Sake of a Valley, uh, based on the idea that though there's high unemployment in the area, uh, the collieries have closed down, there's a lack in transport, there's still a strong will for people to stay. Percussion train that we used in the street event and we're using it again in our video project represents the closure of the railway in the valley. The point is that well, if the collieries are going to close down, people are going to move out to the valley and when the people move out it's going to leave older people in the valley uh, the valley is just, just going to go to waste We are around the youth dance We're young and we've got vitality and we're going to use it we're, we're proud of the room there. Mm. This is where we're from. We don't want it to collapse like we can see it doing. We want to use it. We want to use our heritage and and the fight that's behind the people from the Ronda. And I think that's what we're trying to do. Mm. Yeah, instead of moving away, you want to stay here. Mm. We're being forced to it because there's nothing new for us. Mm. We, want, we want to make it a place for young people who can strive and develop in this community-based project. This is what we're trying to do. 
trying to show the rest of the world and the rest of the people in the Rhonda that, you know, there is vitality. We, you know, there we is do life exist. In it. <laughs> the valley's not dead yet. Mm -hmm. Not yet. No, they think they are. We're fighting back against the system. Waste game, we're gone mad. They made the rules and they're too bad. The waste game grow and see it. It's a cold hard world when the face the reality. You've got you fed in a cheer. They want a commodity. The time has come to break their rules. Time for you to take control. There's got to be some kind of change there. There's got to be some kind of movement. The only way that'll happen is by is events which aren't really um, sort of regarded as political events coming off like um, performances by, by the Peruvian hipsters or whatever, where people get together and see that, that they got something there, there's something between them all. When there's some problem and some strife, people group together, they realise they can come out of their cul-de-sacs and they can knock their videos off and they can walk out of their houses and it's like the... Um, it's like the old days, you know. I mean, people often hark back to the 1920s strike and all this kind of thing, when there was a real community. But it's, that thing can happen again, you know. I mean, we've had those things taken away from us without even realising it, you know. I found when I first started making videos that it was just a matter of grabbing a camera, going out, filming a couple of shots, filming a couple of interviews, coming back, putting it together and making a video. But since I've been doing it for a year now, uh, you, f you tend to realise that the material that you shoot in is, uh, is emotional material to most people. In the valley, for instance, when I, when I filmed the clo closing of the last colliery and previously the destruction of the colliery, uh, it has a great emotional effect on you and you, you, you find that while you're doing it, there's a point to it all the way through and you're always trying to get this point across. The last train is coming and it's never coming back. The bus is being privatised and my dad's got the sack. We're staying in this valley. You can hear a shout. We're staying because we want to. Not because we can't get out. I think the people, the community, when they watch us dancing, they get involved emotionally watching us dancing. And they think, well, if they're doing something, why can't I? Time is time to break the rules. Time is time to take control. The only time change will ha happen is when the, the situation gets so chronic that people actually decide that they can actually change things themselves. So they're not prepared to, to toe the line anymore. They're not prepared to sit back and let things, passively accept things happening to them. So I think that uh, political change will come through people realising that the whole, the whole game is being run by other people to put, put them down, to suppress them, so that they keep having smaller slices of the cake and smaller slices and believing that um, they're fighting each other when they should be fighting a greater enemy, which is the uneven distribution of wealth or whatever. can talk and talk and talk and nobody will listen to you at all but if we actually get up and do something it gets it across much quicker and more forceful than talking or anything else that I can think of. I don't know. It would be nice to think that these are the first few small steps towards bringing the game to an end. Because I think the waste game has had its day, and it's time to replace it with a new game, the talent game. But when I look at the board, I don't see much sign of that happening. Do you? It's going to take a lot more tactical thinking, with a lot more players involved. 
In the meantime, a whole generation of talent carries on playing the waste game. Your time pleases me. Let flies and sex. Money.